Hi, this is Bob. This is Wednesday, 10-16-2019. And uh, I was working today on a power supply, which is right up here. I first got this power supply in uh, 1972. It's a 1950s vintage power supply designed for rack mounting. And uh, it had a uh, selenium rectifier in it, selenium rectifier assembly when I got it. I took that out. There was also a uh, filter choke in there that weighed uh, over 12 pounds, about 12 and a half pounds, and I took that out and uh, reduced the weight of it considerably. But I was working on that power supply and I was installing the uh, combination amp meter and voltmeter that you see here. You can buy these, uh, several, several different uh, uh, people advertise them on eBay. Now this is a voltmeter that I have in my hand here. The one up there is a voltmeter and amp meter. And I found these work very well. One thing I also found is that you really need a separate power supply to run the voltmeter and amp meter. Uh, if, you're, if you're using just the voltmeter, you can run that off of your power supply and run the the meter off of the power supply voltage as well that's that's real easy to do but if you're running the voltmeter and amp meter I highly recommend that you use a separate little power supply to run it and I used what they call a wall wart a small power supply that plug plugs into the wall I just soldered a couple wires on it and I stuck it to the bottom of the chassis in here with some E6000 glue and then I ran the plus and minus wires over to this to operate it because this has to operate in the negative lead of the power supply and it's very difficult to hook it up and make it work properly uh, without using a separate little power supply so if you get one of these I highly recommend you use a separate little wall wart type power supply inside and I just connected to it with uh, by soldering wires to the two small plugs that plug into the wall outlet normally. And then I put heat shrink tubing over that. So it gets its power from inside the 110 or 120 inside to, to power that little power supply. It's kind of flickering there. That's because of the scan rate of the camera. And there is a scan rate too to this. But when I look at it with my eye here, I don't see any flickering at all. Uh, anyway, I was just commenting about those. They're very, very inexpensive. I think that costs $5 total, including shipping. And I really like them. I've, I've got two of them in use right now. But I was working on that, and I decided that I wanted to check the ripple in the power supply. So I fired up my scope here. This is a... Uh, Tektronik 475A oscilloscope. I bought it over 15 years ago and it has worked flawlessly. It did have a little problem when I bought it. It was a loose connection and all I had to do was solder it. I was on, I believe, on this circuit board here that had the loose connection. But I soldered that loose connection and uh, the thing has worked, like I say, flawlessly for 15 years. And uh, so here I'm checking out this power supply up here, looking at the ripple with the scope, and the scope just quit, which uh, was rather upsetting because I really like this scope. It's, it's an old scope. Uh, the, uh, the instruction manual that I have here on this scope says 1975. Uh, so this is a very old scope, but boy, it sure works nice, and I like it. And it's big, but I still like it. Anyhow, I, uh, I was checking the ripple and the scope just quit. And I thought, oh, what's going on here? So I took it all apart, and it took me about six hours to find the problem. And it was such a surprise when I found the problem. I had never encountered something like this before. Of course, in electronics, you do encounter strange things. And what the problem was... You see these little 
silicon rectifier modules that's a full wave bridge module there another one here another one here another one here and there was one right here I did not have one to replace it with but the thing thing that that happened was that this rectifier module I could check it from points on the board here I found the different points I needed to check the individual diodes in there and it checked good no problem there's this is a temporary capacitor I put on there on top of the board just for testing purposes I'm going to take that out and put the regular capacitor back in there but I wanted to show you what I had found and what I had found was that this bridge rectifier assembly which no longer exists I crushed it. I crushed it with my large wire cutting pliers here. Big ones. I crushed it out of there and I connected a replacement bridge rectifier right here. And it's a different shape, a different package. It's a little higher capacity. This was an uh, amp and a half that was in there originally. This is a 6 amp bridge rectifier here. But there was a spot here and I just glued it down there with a little bit of E6000 glue. I ran some, these are Teflon wires, ran them over here and I soldered them to the little stubs of the wires that came out of the original bridge rectifier. And uh, I don't have that bridge rectifier to show to you because I chipped it out of there in little pieces using those big wire cutters. And the reason I did that was that to get underneath this board and unsolder that rectifier I would have to, to do a major disassembly of the oscilloscope. And if you look there are all these things that have to be taken out, all these wires have to be disconnected, all these shafts and knobs and things have to be taken loose and I was not about to do that. I thought the possibility of my damaging something losing something, breaking something, or putting something back together wrong and connecting it up wrong was too great. So I decided to just nibble away at that bridge rectifier until there was nothing left but the four little wires coming up out of the board. I then wrapped these little wires around them and soldered them very quickly, about a second each, one second each soldering, because you could unsolder those little stubs of wires that remain in the board. You could you could unsolder them from the board and I didn't want to do that either but it worked and so I soldered this in and it operated so then I took a little dab of E6000 glue and I, a very small dab because I don't want that to be glued securely and then have trouble if I ever have to take it out. So I just put a little tiny bit just to hold it in place and this capacitor here will be taken off here and it will go under the board. There's a hole where it goes in and it will go under the board so uh, that will be replaced too. But I wanted to show you uh, what I ran into here. And what I ran into was that that rectifier checked absolutely good using the Simpson 260 meter. And what the thing was, was that rectifier had an intermittent connection inside that was temperature sensitive. And it would cut out almost immediately when you turn this on and it really really was unusual and I wanted to show you what it was because I couldn't hardly believe it I had never run into something like that an intermittent bridge rectifier that was so sensitive that when you the intermittent was so sensitive that when you turned this on it would work for about a second and then it would cut out and very difficult to trace down if you work on one of these scopes you must remember that if you're working on the power supplies and the first thing you check is the voltages in the power supplies that's the first thing you do with any piece of electronic equipment if you're working on it make sure it has the proper voltages coming out of the power supply or power supplies in this case and if you do that on this type of a scope like on the Tektronik uh, 475 or 475A you must check those voltages in the proper order and that is given in the manual so you want to do that. I've got the manual here and as you can see 
here's a power supply, here's a power supply, here's a power supply, here's a power supply, and they are interconnected, and you must do them in proper order because one power supply powers portions of the next power supply. So you can have one power supply go out and you can lose all of them. So uh, you want to do them in the proper order, which they tell you in the manual. And so uh, I worked on this for a couple of hours before I got the manual out and then found out what I was doing that was wrong. I was not looking at those power supplies and that's on page 4-15 here in the manual and uh, right there right there let me get this camera that shows you the proper, proper method or the proper sequence to use checking the power supplies and I also made notes in here test voltages in this sequence so I checked them and the 5 volts was not there so uh, I went back to the schematic, found out where the 5 volts came from out of this winding right here on the power transformer and looked at the circuit and I did not have the voltage right here coming out of the full wave bridge. I took a uh, mini grinder tool. I have a BNK, BNK? Black and Decker, excuse me. I have a Black and Decker mini grinder and I cut the trace on this scope. See where that red mark is right there and a little jumper? I cut the trace right there using a small carbide ball cutter in the Black and Decker mini grinder so that all that was left was in the circuit was the bridge rectifier and the capacitor and I still had no voltage so then I took the capacitor out and put this temporary capacitor in here and found out I still didn't have any voltage so I was checking and something that I found that was interesting if you look right down here right next to that screwdriver you see that little red dot there's another one right up above it there right under there those two red dots are connected to the transformer winding. So I checked there, I had 10 volts AC there, but nothing coming out of the rectifier assembly. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've got a temperature sensitive intermittent silicon bridge rectifier. So like I say, I crushed it carefully with these, and then I had the four little wires sticking up, and then I connected this bridge which is a silicon rectifier bridge onto those with little short wires and it and it works and it works good I then later found looking through some other boxes of parts and I later found this which would have been a, re a replacement that I could put into the board but I don't want to take it all apart and do that so I'm going to leave it like it is and like I say, I'm going to install this capacitor. There's a hole underneath the board where the capacitor fits. This is the original capacitor here, and I'm not going to put it back in. I'm going to put this one in, but I'm going to cover it with a big piece of shrink tube or electrical tape would work fine too. And I'm going to put it underneath the board and hook it up that way to replace that capacitor and fix my 1975 oscilloscope. And I found a date 1975 in the oscilloscope manual, so it gives me an idea when the thing was made. But I thought it's so unusual to find an intermittent silicon bridge rectifier. And also the, the, the whole problem here was just so strange. Removing all of the parts from the circuit by cutting that circuit board trace right here and then that left just the capacitor and the bridge rectifier in the circuit and still had no voltage and it was by the bridge rectifier so as soon as I turned this on the bridge rectifier heated and boom that fast it would cut out so there was a there was an electrical connection opening inside the rectifier 
anyways that cured the problem the scope is back in business again and it's my favorite scope so I was really happy to get it working and such an unusual problem that I wanted to show you guys what it was and I just know that there's going to be one guy out there that's going to say oh my gosh and he's going to check and he's going to find that thing here's parts of the rectifier that I that I chopped off of there with there 